Welcome and good morning, everyone. I see a number of names in the attendees list that I recognize and know that I've worked with a number of you and seen you doing some of the things that we're going to be covering in the webinar today. Uh, so our goal today is a very targeted webinar. We're going to be talking about engaging beyond your site with the use of social media and email marketing in a way that ties back into your site in the hopes of garnering a more substantial following and really getting your word out there and enabling your members to help you generate further engagement. So at this point, what we're going to take a do, what we're going to do is take a minute to look at the tools that are in My League Online and how you can use them. So I will just go ahead and get started. Right now, I'm on a demo league site. This is my League Online. It is an actual site that we have up on My League Online that people can look at to use as an example. And I'm logged in as the webmaster of this specific league. What I'm going to do is scroll down here and find an article that perhaps I'm interested in seeing more engagement or activity occur on. And this, what I'm going to show you, can be done with events, it can be done with your positions, it can be done with items that you add as articles, which might be press announcements, they might be press releases or press mentions, uh, they might be member stories, they might be news stories. You can also use this for action alerts. All of the tools, all of the content on the Milo site operates following the same rules when it comes to social media. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to make use of this article right here, Demo Article for Office Hours, which has an image and a summary that are showing up on the home page. So if I go ahead and click on this specific article, now we're going to see the details of that article. So we see the image at the top, and then we have the text of the article right here. So what Milo offers are tools to make it easy, not only for you to spread your content out beyond your website, but also ideally for anyone who comes to your site, for your members or people who happen across something that they find really interesting and want to share, uh, that we want them to be able to share this content as well. There are logical defaults set up, which I'll show you in a moment, but those defaults you may want to override them, and you also have the tools to do that. So let's take a look at the anatomy of how this content works when outreaching to social media by looking at what happens if I send this particular article to Facebook. So uh, first, we'll just take another quick look. We have the article title. We have the image right here, which is the main image. And then we have content in the article. And if I go back to the home page again, just want to show you really quickly, we also have a teaser for this specific article right here, which looks different from the first paragraph of the article itself. So we have a lot of information and pieces of this article. When I'm here as a user, whether I'm the webmaster, a member, or the general public, it doesn't really matter. But if I'm here as a user, I get this share button. And if I click on it, now I have a number of options for social media channels that I can share to. I can also click more, and you'll see this number here, 193. There are 193 other social channels that might be available for you to share this content to automatically through the Milo system. The most common ones that you're going to probably make use of are going to be Facebook and Twitter. And then LinkedIn is also a good choice for a bulk of your user base. So those are ones that you'll probably be using most often. Elizabeth and I were talking earlier about how successful Twitter, or sorry, how successful Instagram is as well as a channel for communication. So that's one that you might use fairly frequently also. But we're going to go ahead and start with Facebook because it provides the easiest way for you to really see how these pieces are being broken down. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Facebook. And what's going to happen is it's going to reach out to Facebook and pull up a share window based on the user account 
with which I am currently signed into Facebook in this browser. And this is important. If you are trying to share to Facebook and you're not authenticated to Facebook as a user, then you will be taken to um, a prompt to authenticate to Facebook because you cannot engage on Facebook without a user account. And I'm iterating that point a little bit because, or emphasizing that point a little bit because uh, we have actually had people ask us questions about that. You are not able to share to Facebook without a user account. And it does need to be a personal user account, though you can share to Facebook through your league, not necessarily just through your personal Facebook account. So now that I've pulled this up, what I see are that image that is the main image in that piece of content. And then I see a title. You'll notice that the title is actually different from the title of the content itself. Everything zoomed in a little bit, so it's jumping around. So let me try to kind of move this to where you can see both. So you'll see that the title of the content says demo article for office hours. And then here it says demo title change to test Google Plus. And the reason why these two things are different has to do with some customizations that I've done within the content itself, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. But what's really important to know is that if you don't make customizations, then it'll automatically take whatever the title is of your specific piece of content. And then it's gonna take the teaser. And the teaser being that little summary that shows up if you promote the content to the home page or any time that content is in a list. It is not going to take the content itself. Notice this particular article starts right in with a list. So it's not gonna take that item, it's going to take the teaser. If you do not have a teaser, then it will take the first 300 characters of the content that you have, and it will stop once it reaches 300, it will just stop right there. So that's how it's figuring out what to pull into this space where it's automatically creating that Facebook share link or that Twitter link or whatever it is that you're sharing to. And one of the neat, actually, let me go ahead and share this to my timeline. Um, I'm sharing as myself. You'll see right up here at the top, it says share on your timeline. And right here, down at the bottom, I have an option to cancel. I also have an option to say who sees this content. So I'm going to test this out. I want to see how this looks when it actually goes to my timeline. So I'm going to say that I'm the only one who, who can see this particular post. And that's a good way where you can test and see how something looks. Again, notice share on your timeline is what I've selected. And then I've selected only me as who I'm sharing to. And then I'll go ahead and post this to Facebook. And then that particular window that was up will go away. So now if I go to my Facebook timeline and reload my Facebook feed, Here's the link that I just shared. So I see I didn't write a message in there. And then I see the image, I see the title, and I see the caption. And then if I click on this, it's gonna take me right back to that article on the site. So this is a great way for me to get something out into a social platform. Ideally, then, my members of my league, my member colleagues or my friends, would share my post if they found it interesting or they would comment on the post and they would engage in some way, even just liking or, or loving a post will encourage the post to show up on other people's feeds and then start spreading that content out to the internet as a whole. When you're done testing, you can go ahead and delete your post using these little dot, dot, dots right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it because I don't really want it there. And then I also wanna show you how you can take that exact same window that just popped up and share the content directly to a page that you manage because presumably a lot of the people who are on this call have Facebook pages that you are managing for your, uh, for your league. So let's look at the LWV Los Angeles page right here. I'm not actually going to share this to the LWV Los Angeles page, but if I wanted to, 
I can do the same thing. I can click on Share to Facebook. Notice this also makes it possible for you to quickly share to multiple pages. And then up here, instead of Share on your timeline, I'm going to choose Share on a page that you manage. And now I get to choose which page I want to send it to. And in this case, I want to send it to LWV Los Angeles. And I want to post as either myself or as LWV Los Angeles. So I get to choose what I'm posting as. All of these settings are available to me because I, as an individual, as Rain Michaels, have been given admin permissions in these spaces. I wouldn't be able to make any of these choices if I didn't have admin permissions on the League of Women Voters of Los Angeles Facebook page and permissions to post as League of Women Voters of Los Angeles. But since I do, I can go ahead and make those selections and then I can post this to Facebook and it'll automatically go directly there. I can also add more information here if I want to in the process of doing that. And some of the other great things that I can do are provide some physical location information if that's relevant. I can tag people in the post. The great thing about tagging people in the post is that then you start sending that post out not only to your page, but then you also start sending it out to the pages or to the personal feeds of the people that you tag, which then causes their friends and the people that they're connected to to start seeing that content as well. So it drives further engagement. And if you're wondering why you might tag somebody in a post, a great example might be if one of your members um, led a candidate forum, then you would tag that member and you would also want to tag those candidates in that post because if that candidate forum is about those people, you want that information to go out and you want it to be connected to those individuals. Another great example might be if you have a number of members that go to a high school for youth engagement and early voter registration, then you could tag, you wouldn't want to tag the high school students unless you had permission to do so, but you could definitely tag all of your member volunteers who went out and did this work so that it would go out onto their personal feeds and then start getting liked and loved and commented on by their friends and family and colleagues and then spreading out well beyond the immediate network that your specific page has, which is probably going to be, in the scheme of things, fairly small, whereas once you start adding together the kind of scope that you have access to, if you start getting your content out into other people's spaces, in a moral way, of course, <laughs> then, then you can uh, drive much more engagement and get a lot more interaction especially once conversations start to happen. So that's, that's kind of the anatomy of taking your content as is at a very base level and then sending it out to social media. And again, using Facebook as the example. Other social media tools will have different things that they allow you to do and they'll scrape different data. So it's worth playing with to see how you can customize it for the space that you really want to share it to. But one of the things that we have seen overall in the social media, in the online social media space, is that images definitely drive more clicks and interaction with posts. And then the other thing that really drives interaction with posts is engaging people directly or calling out individuals directly in a positive way that they will want to sort of brag about and promote so that they know that other people start to see it. So anything that you can come up with that gives you the platform for your members to sort of brag about themselves is going to help you drive engagement and get that voter information out there. Um, you know, if, if somebody, if one of your volunteers or a couple of your volunteers, uh, your members took time to volunteer to create your um, pros and cons guide or, or a, a detailed list of ballot measures, in your local area, then you might want to tag the individuals who did that work and thank them for it so that they can then kind of turn around and, and brag about the work that they did. 
uh, of course, any, it has to be within the realm of what's, uh, what's acceptable, but trying to find those areas where you're basically promoting other people so that they will promote the content itself. Thinking in a kind of very, um, it sounds very narcissistic, but it really will get the content really rolling in a more successful manner. So that's the basic anatomy. Now, the next thing that uh, I think is probably important to, let me actually cancel this properly. Okay, the next thing that's probably important to a lot of people listening to this is thinking, well, how can I customize? Let's say I don't wanna put an image up here at the top of my piece of content, or let's say I don't want it to use this title, or I don't want it to use this summary. So we'll take a look at this in a moment and we'll start to customize what the social media platforms pull from the article or the action alert or the position or whatever it is that you are going to post. But before I turn to that anatomy and that customization, I wanna stop and see if there are any questions based on what we've already covered. So Elizabeth, I'm gonna turn it over to you to monitor questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions today? I don't see um, any chats or any hands being raised yet. Um, so I think we can probably keep going. I will add, however, a one note about the images. Um, from a performance standpoint, images with faces always perform mm -hmm. best. It's very hard, I know, it's a challenge for us to always have faces when we produce so many actual products, um, but faces do the best. So if you can lean towards that, um, it brings out emotion in people, it's relatable. Um, so think about that when you're looking for images. Thank so you, that's no, a really great point. Okay. I'm not seeing any so, hands raised, so why don't you continue and do you want me to pass you back are you still a presenter, Rain? I am still a presenter. So Great. I'm going to show you now how to customize these pieces. And we'll do that by editing this piece of content. All right, so now we are on the content form. And this right here is your main image. So you can change, you can swap out the main image if you want to. That is one way to make the change, but that change will also impact your site. So if you have something that you specifically designed for the site versus something that you really specifically want going out to Facebook, then you won't want to necessarily customize your main image by replacing the main image. You'll want to do, to do that somewhere else. The only piece that you'll customize up here if you want it to be different from the content is going to be the summary. So I wanna show you how this normally looks. By default, when you're looking at any of your content, the body field, there won't be a summary field, and the body field itself will have this little edit summary link right next to it. In order to get that custom summary field, you need to click on edit summary, and then that'll bring up a plain text field. And it is very important that this is plain text because any, formatting that you put in there will not only be ignored, but it'll also be counted against your character count. So you will lose space. You will lose characters and therefore letters, which might translate into words and meaning. So you always wanna make sure that whatever it is that Facebook or Twitter or anybody else is going to grab for the text, that you are making use of plain text with no formatting, no bold, no italic, uh, no list, no, none of that, just nice, simple, clean text. So that's what you're seeing here. If you want to customize the title or the image without changing what the article itself shows, that will happen. And you can also do it with the summary if you want, but most of that work will happen down here at the very bottom in this meta tags tab, which I'm sure many of you, I know a few of you have played with, and I'm sure many of you have seen and wondered what it is and, and maybe got a little nervous and, um, and said, well, I'm not gonna touch that for a while. But this is where some of that magic happens. So we're gonna start out by clicking on meta tags. And the first category here is basic tags. 
basic tags has to do with what social, sorry, not what social media sees. Basic tags has to do with what search engines see. So it's the official metadata, the, the kind of data about this particular piece of content. What is the page title in your browser title bar? Uh, what does Google see as the page title? What does Google see as the description? Right now it's pulling the node summary. By the way, if you're seeing these weird little brackets with a colon uh, and then some words, those are what are called tokens. The tokens are found in here, but there are something like 100,000 tokens on the site. So if you decide to play in here, first of all, know that you might make some mistakes and do some trial and error. And second of all, know that it might take about 15 minutes for it to load because it's very, uh, it's loading a lot of information. Um, so for the most part, you probably won't be using tokens. You'll be customizing your metadata with actual text. So if you didn't want to grab the summary that you had handwritten, then you might paste in a new summary, my custom summary in the description, and then there's also abstract and keywords, which I know that you're familiar with from kind of the old school of, of metadata and search engine uh, optimization. But it's important to know that keywords are really only important as categorization now. They're not really important for search engine optimization anymore because there was too much keyword stuffing that went on. But this whole section up at the top, basic tags, this really isn't going to impact your page in the social media world so much as it will in search engines and just in terms of classic categorization of that content. There's another option here with more tags. These are kind of more basic tags, whether or not you're allowing search engines to browse your content, obviously some very important pieces of information and other information that you might want to give about your content. This information is really important, but we do have logical defaults in place, and you're probably not going to want to customize them unless you really know what you're doing. So for the most part, basic tags and advanced tags, you're going to ignore unless you feel like a very advanced user, or you just want to explore with something that doesn't really matter as you're getting familiar with what you're doing. The one that does matter to you, however, when it comes to social media is open graph. I'm gonna go ahead and expand that one. And a lot of this might not make a lot of sense to you uh, in terms of pure logic because it's written in very kind of programmer speak. But I do wanna point out the ones that are important to you. This one right here. So remember how I showed you that when I shared it to Facebook, it was using a different title from the title that was actually up in the content itself. So this is where I customized that title. So I just wrote some text in, uh, a new title for social media. So I can put something new in there, and now I have a new title in there. I can also determine what type of content this is, which tells social media how to treat it. If somebody is really interested in, well, you definitely might want to think about um, government or politician because you're trying to target people based on their interests and then however you actually target this piece of content is how the how the social media environment will determine who sees it and will prioritize whether or not it goes up to the top so that's definitely an important one another important one is you can override the summary here as well and then finally here is another really important set, image, image URL, and secure image URL. So these are all basically the same thing. The only difference here is this one has the token. If you wanna put a straight up URL using HTTP um, as an alternate image to the one, to the initial one that's taken by default from field image, you can do that my URL to my image. You can certainly do that here. But in the case of Milo, we're entirely under HTTPS. So that's the difference here. You'll place the URL into secure image URL, not image URL, because we're an HTTPS site. But you could also just delete this and replace your 
URL to your image in here in order to change the image that the search engine sees. So you may be wondering what I'm on about with how to figure out the URL of an image. So let's actually go ahead and take a look at that. As a webmaster, I can see all of the files. And let me go back and do that again because I think I did that a little quickly. I'm going to click on Administer League Site, click on Manage Files. And now I can look at all of the files that are in my league online that have been added, and I can see if I can find one that I really like. Well, here's a great one right here. It's Your Voice Matters. It's, uh, it's promoting Vote 411. So this is a great one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this image. And let's see why that didn't work. OK, the URL for it is a little bit broken. So we'll figure out. It's not the image that's broken, but the, um, the URL itself. So let's see. I'm just going to go directly to it so that I can show you how this works. Oh, that's interesting. Of course, live demo, right? There we go. OK, there's, there's not the image that I wanted, but a different image. So I'm not sure why that didn't work. And I'll look into that. But this should work for you. So we'll, we'll make sure that it's fixed so that you would be able to go to the image, to the file. You would take a look at it. And then what you can do is you can right click on it and choose copy image address. And that's what you want. You want that image address. What is the URL for the image itself? And then in here, you can go ahead and paste that URL. I'm going to paste it. And now I have a URL, a nice long URL for that specific image. And then once I've made those choices, now I can go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom and I can save this. I probably just generated a lot of questions, but first I'm going to show you nothing really changed here. This all looks the same. If I click share to Facebook again, it all looks exactly the same. None of my changes took effect. The reason for this is because of Facebook caching. So something that you'll want to keep track of, and I realize it's 11.29, so I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly, but this is a really important trick for you. Um, so I'm going to cancel this and leave. And then I'm going to show you this URL, which Elizabeth is going to send you in the chat for this webinar. And this is a Facebook URL, a debugging URL, where what you can do is you can take your page. Let me actually make sure that this is published. So you can take the URL for your page, which I'm going to double click here to get that URL in my URL bar up at the top. I'm going to grab the entire thing, copy it, and then in the Facebook debugger, right here where it says sharing debugger, I'm going to paste that URL and click debug. Now it's going to show me what it sees on Facebook. What is it pulling? And it's going to tell me the last time it scraped that specific page. And I can tell it, OK, I want you to scrape again and see what my new content is. And interestingly, for some reason, it isn't taking it, again, because this is a live demo. But normally, that would work. And I probably just didn't set something to published properly, so it's not taking. But normally what would happen at this point is it would scrape again, and you would see these items update immediately. Again, live demo are running out of time. So of course, it's not working in this moment. But trust me, it will work for you, especially if you have made sure that your content is saved and published. And that is really the key to how you to the anatomy of what your content looks like in social media. Those open graph elements that I showed you, those are all relevant to all of the social media tools that are out there. That's why it's called open graph. It's kind of a uh, general catching all of the social media tools, not just catching the 
the ones that are at the top, the Facebook or whatever. So as long as the social media tool is paying attention to open graph, then it'll be using this data in order to inform what it pulls. And then as long as you're very diligent about tagging people and posting in the right spaces, then your word will have the ability to spread. Your content will have the ability to spread and get out to the people that you want to share it with. Uh, knowing that we're at that half an hour mark, Elizabeth, I should turn it over to you, A, to see if there's questions, and B, to see if I have time to just show an email template. Sure. So I've unmuted myself just to ask again if there are any questions, if people can either put up their hand or put something in the chat box. I think that would be the best way. If that doesn't seem to work, I might unmute everyone just for a moment in case there's some kind of problem with the system that no one's asking a question. But I just wanted to throw out there that also that I know Rain showed us a lot of detailed items and you may be thinking to yourself, how am I going to do that for every single post? And so my suggestion is to sort of break it down into smaller tasks and to perhaps do some of these itemized pieces for some of your key um, pieces of work. So for example, if you're promoting Voters Edge, you could do that. If you're promoting your specific voter guide or your pros and cons for your local league, maybe you want to focus on doing it for that or a very specific mm -hmm. event. So don't feel that you're obligated to do all of those things. And do know that yeah. you can also do these same types of sharing from our website um, or you can um, Replica, you can use the content from our site and, and plug it into yours if, if that's needed, or you can simply share from some of our social media channels as well. So I don't want to discourage you uh, by the amount of work it might seem to you at first. Um, here is one question. Yeah, hey, um, I, I sorry, just want to tag on to that before we do the question. Um, I, the, the important thing is what Elizabeth just said about not feeling like you need to do it for every piece of content. We have logical defaults in place. So it's not going to be bad if you don't do anything at all. It will still function in a logical manner. All you need to do is customize those ones where you really want to do something special. Great. And Rain, we do have a question in the question box. Thank you so much, Suzanne. So I know it's working. Um, and Suzanne is asking if we will be taking um, Google Plus off the list since it will be shut down soon. Yes, that's a great question. And I'm glad you asked that. Um, so the answer to that is we're using a third party tool for the sharing feature. So when they update their tools, then Google Plus will be taken off. And it's a it is the most commonly used third-party tool that's out there, so my guess is that it should probably happen pretty soon. Thanks, Rain. Oh, uh, I answered Suzanne's question. Oh, and she says thanks. Are there any other questions that we have at this time? I see a bunch of other people on here. I'm going to go ahead and just for fun, unmute everyone. So let's just see what happens when I do that. Um, so I'm unmuting everyone. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask those questions now out loud if you're not as comfortable using the chat box. I have successfully unmuted everyone. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask out loud? I'm not hearing any, so I do get a little bit of back. Oh, I do get a little bit of um, background sound, so I'm going to mute everyone again. I did get a message from Nathan Gold saying, "No mic here, but thank you for the session." So thank you so much for your your feedback. Um, again, any other questions? Please put your questions in the chat box or raise your hand. I see Suzanne, you have your hand raised. So I'm gonna call on Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Elizabeth. Um, how, how, we aren't using Instagram yet. I mean, this is kind of social media. How successful have you found people being on Instagram? And is it is it a lot more is it a lot more work or is it just something else? 
great question. I haven't delved into all of the analytics yet, so I can't give you any numbers. Um, but I can tell you that many leagues seem to just like it better um, than, say, Twitter, for example. Um, it is more image-based, um, and you can use filters to mess with your images. But you can also do something called regramming where it's an additional app that you can use from your phone to basically um, copy a link and use someone else's post and post it as your own through just a simple copy paste. Um, so I notice people are doing that a lot with the league um, site. Um, and again, it's something that I had originally assigned to one of our interns, our high school interns, and she had some fun with it and garnered quite a few followers. And so now it's on me <laughs> to sort of keep that up. Um, but I am noticing a lot of leagues joining Instagram. So again, I will have to um, tell you post-election if, if I notice any insights or information on that. But there is a little bit of advertising on Instagram, and I know some leagues, Texas in particular, um, is taking advantage of some of that. So um, I, I don't have any definitive answers, but I do think it's, it's another place to meet some voters that may not be on Facebook, as Facebook tends to lean older and may not be on Twitter, because Twitter can be very divisive. So I think some of the younger set of folks are definitely um, going to Instagram for all of those reasons. No, thanks yeah, for that. I, I would definitely yeah. recommend both Instagram and LinkedIn as additional channels that, for the reasons that Elizabeth just mentioned. Uh, the LinkedIn is more of the professional space, but there are a lot of people who are just kind of getting off all of the social channels, but staying in the professional spaces. So that reaches another market as well. LinkedIn, you can easily share to using these tools. Instagram yes. is going to be a little bit more work because uh, for it, it, it's a very easy tool to use. It's very nice. The reason why it's so successful is because it is so simple. But that means it's really kind of its own environment and it doesn't play in the same way with all of the kind of push everything out tools that are out there. It requires a little bit more manual curation. Yeah, that's good to know because I'm personally, I'm on all of those. But um, mm -hmm. I, that's the thing I couldn't figure out was how do you, how do you share on Instagram? Because that's what I'd rather yeah. do would take state content or U.S. <laughs> content and share it. So it's the regramming. Yes, there's a there's a couple of different um, apps that you can use. The one that I happen to use is I think it's a re regram. Um, and so what that does is it allows you to regram while giving credit to the person that you have um, taken it from. So that way you don't get yourself into a, a problem with copyright issues. So it'll say from LWV of CA in the bottom left or right corner. Got it. Um, so they, people know where it came from. Okay. Um, but which button is the share button? Is it the the send thing with the the little? Um, anyway, I can look it up. I mean, it's I'll I'll look it up on their help page. And again, it's a great recruitment tool to use. So when I um, recruited a couple high school interns, it was a fantastic thing that I could just hand over to them and say, have at it. Um, and it was a great way to get them engaged. Um, and the same young lady that I did that has now done her own voter registration drive at her high school. So it was just a great entry point for her and something that really interests her. So thanks so much for your question, Suzanne. I appreciate that. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions here from anyone? I see we still have people on the line. Um, Nathan doesn't have a mic, but he, oh, I guess he just asked a question. Um, let's see. Tracy, did you have a question? Tracy, did you have a question? No, just thought that that was a great question because we were concerned with the amount of time it would take to keep up with uh, the speed of Instagram. And that's something that's really worth reaching out to your members and seeing if you have someone who might be willing to take that on or a couple of people who might be willing to take that on because it is something that 
somebody can do from their home. And, you know, a, a good example, I, I'm a, I'm kind of a great example. I'm a new mom. I'm extremely, I'm a working mom. I'm extremely busy. And um, I've been involved with the league for years, but right now I just don't have the time to go to meetings. I, I really can't do it. I can't do kind of physical things where I go someplace. And, um, but what I can do is work on the websites that I can do anything where I can do it, you know, from my bed in the middle of the night or uh, wh whatever it is, you know, while I'm at a doctor's office. And so if you reach out, you probably do have members who would like to be more engaged. And this is an easy thing for them to do because it doesn't actually involve them getting in their car and going somewhere, but they can be very active. Okay, I am not seeing any additional questions at this time. For, any other final questions for, here? Or did you want to show us something from, else on the share button? Yeah, for anyone that's still here, I'd like to very quickly just talk about email uh, because you know there's a, a long history of very detailed um, voter newsletters and other emails that go out from local leagues to the membership. And so I wanted to talk about how you can use your email as a source of engagement as well. And the most successful email campaigns that go out uh, tend to be, I just mocked up a little example for you of what it might look like. This isn't highly designed or anything, it's very simple. But you know, some kind of image to lead people in is always nice, it's not necessary if the topic is good. And then a little intro paragraph. But then instead of providing very detailed information in the email, Actually, just giving quick little snippets in text form, not in not in image form, but in text form. They can have images to augment them. And then a little snippet that entices people. And then what's called, what we call a CTA, a call to action, that's designed as a big button. And it says, you know, do this. So notice the, the ones that I mocked up here. Submit your photos. If you're, you know, trying to get people to share photos with you that you might put out on Instagram or put onto your website, uh, register for this event, get involved, um, really kind of clear actions that are in those big buttons. And that's what's going to get people both back to your site and potentially pushing that content further out to other people, as opposed to the, the longer stories, which, um, which are not necessarily going to drive the same kind of interaction and engagement. So I also wanted to just make sure that I showed this to you. Um, and I did, I am kind of uh, obligated to make sure that you know that you are legally required to include a street address and an unsubscribe link on any email that you send out to a mailing list. So I wanted to make sure that that was known as well. But that's all Thanks, I got. Rain. <laughs> Well, that's very helpful, and thank you so much to everyone who's joined us today. Again, you will get a recording of this email directly to you um, by tomorrow when it sends you an automated thank you to the email you use to register. Um, also, keep in mind, we will be continuing to have these sort of short but sweet webinars on specific topics. So we're always looking for new topics. So if there is one that you would like to see us cover, um, please send it along to us. And you can send that to Milo at lwvc.org or directly to me at elesley at lwvc.org. I think most of you have, have my email address, but feel free to do that. Some of the other topics that are on deck are what to do instead of a PDF, which is a challenge many leagues have, especially as we're seeing more mobile users. It's something we really need to think about um, doing differently. Um, so again, please send us your topics and thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, thank you so much to Rain for sharing all of your expertise with us. Thank you for coming. Have a great day, everyone. It's almost the election. <laughs>